All right, guys, this is it. It's officially the final draft weekend, and I'm going to give you five biggest tips, practical tips to help you guys crush your draft. Now, I just did a video like this four or five days ago. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to deep dive into practical application. So if I say go robust RB, I'll tell you which running backs to draft, okay? So we're going to talk about it. It's going to be a deep dive here. Five last minute <laughs> biggest Fantasy football draft day tips. Fantasy football advice to help you win. Some people say, how do I win my league? Use these five tips. Implement them. Along with my 16-round draft solution, you will be light years. When I say that word light years, don't take it lightly, okay? Light years ahead of the competition, guys. Get 16-round draft solution. I've linked it below. Sleepers, breakouts, optimal players, draft in each round. Everything you need to crush your leagues. Now, a lot of people are going to the draft this weekend. I'm going to give you guys a gift from me going into the draft so you guys are prepared and you can treat everybody at the draft, okay, and save some money while doing it. Write this code down, guys. It's called FFC20 for Fantasy Football Counselor 20. Go to Hooters.com or download the app right now, guys. That's Hooters.com or download the app. Save $10 on an order of 30 or more on takeout or delivery at select locations across the USA, okay, guys? Hooters.com, order some nachos, guys. Their nachos are amazing. They come beautifully packed with all the extra accessories on there. You can top your, your nachos. They've got amazing wings. They've got amazing food. Try it. I was just there the other day. Love it, okay? So order, guys. Save $10 on order of 30 more. Takeout or delivery, Hooters.com, or download the app. And use that code FFC20, to save that money. And you can use that throughout the season. But why not, guys? It's draft weekend. Go order some Hooters, guys. Go do that right now. So let's dive into this right now, guys. Without further ado, we are talking about five biggest draft day tips. Let's get into it. I'm pumped up. It's draft weekend. Football's back. Let's get to it right now. <laughs> All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys click subscribe and in the comments below, let me know when your draft is, let's talk, let's discuss, and drop your questions. I want to make this super interactive here for you to help you. I want to help as many people win championships this year. That's my mission. So in the comments below, leave a question. I can't guarantee I'll get to all of them, but I will do my best. If you want me to guarantee I'll get to your question, join the Patreon group right here, patreon.com forward slash FF counselor. I've linked it below the fantasy front lines. That's patreon.com forward slash FF counselor. Okay. Join the Patreon group throughout the entire season and the fantasy 365 community for waiver wires, sleepers, breakouts. Everything you need is linked below. And remember, if you're drafting today, use that code FFC 20 order some Hooters guys today. I already did the, I did the plug earlier uh, on that, all the details on that. And I've linked it below Hooters.com. Download the app F FFC 20 to save $10 or more set. Sorry, $10 on an order of 30 or more. Okay, go do that right now. Okay, guys? On takeout or delivery. All right, let's talk about this. All right, so the first draft tip here, I'm going to try to make it practical. I want to talk in regards to how things are going with the draft with all this Damian Pierce news and all this ADP moving and shifting. So I want to dive into, as I'm explaining this, I'm going to give you guys practical examples as well. Okay, and again, everything is in 16 rounds, but I'm going to give you as much value as I can here for those people, you know, that want some extra advice that for free too. And I don't like to give all my advice for free. That's why everything is in 16 rounds, but I'm going to give you as much as I can here to give you an edge here for over the competition. So number one, guys, do not sleep on the rookies. This is something I didn't put into my last video here. And I talk about this a lot because in my 16 rounds, I go over all of the rookies to draft. But this year, I think there's going to be a ton of great rookie breakouts, okay? And Brees Hall is one of them. You know, you got Alec Pierce, who's completely undrafted. Now, I was at a draft. I was hosting a draft at Hooters a couple days ago, and a lot of people didn't know who Alec Pierce was, which is absolutely insane, this is what gets me, okay? I'm looking at the Kinsheeps on the consensus rankings right now, and I'm seeing T. Higgins here sitting top 13. He's a wide receiver too, okay? Alec Pierce could be a wide receiver one, but he's a wide receiver two as well, going completely undrafted. And do you want to know where he's sitting on the Kinsheeps rankings right now? He's moved up. He's 79th amongst wide receivers. Alec Pierce, one of the top pure deep threat receivers out of this NFL draft class is sitting 79th behind guys like uh, 
who is it? Corey Davis, who's done nothing. Van Jefferson, who's like, oh, I don't know, what is he? Wide receiver three, four, five on his team. Um, Johan Dotson. Again, Dotson, I, I don't trust Carson Wetz, right, in Washington. He's sitting behind Marquise Valdez Scandic, uh, Scanling, Rondell Moore, like all these. Russell Gage, what has he done over the years, right? Alec Pierce, guys, big time sleeper. So I'm giving an example here. But do not sleep on rookies because there's a ton of rookies this year that could absolutely crush it. George Pickens, although George Pickens, a lot of people ask about him, he's in a situation where he's got five other targets there. He's got, you know, Najee Harris, he's got Claypool, he's got Pat Freermoth, right? He's got Deontay Johnson who just got paid, right? So four other main major targets. So he's kind of like, an, you know, the fourth or fifth option there, theoretically, unless he completely surpasses Claypool, right? So there's a ton of guys. You just got to know which ones are the optimal, optimal players to draft. Now, Traylon Burks could be in a good position to, to succeed this year. Rookie, right? Very high draft capital by the Titans, right? There's a lot of guys that... Christian Watson, second-round pick by the Packers. There's a lot of teams that invested high draft capital in players. Drake London, another one. I'm giving you guys a ton of sleepers here right now. Guys, this is huge value for you. That are high on the depth chart, yet people will draft a wide receiver three on a team over a potential wide receiver one. It's absolutely ludicrous. Drake London, there's no one else there. I don't care who's throwing the ball. I don't care if I was throwing the ball. If I only have one receiver that I that, that's talented on my team, I'm going to that receiver. He was drafted eighth overall, first round, first overall pick by the Atlanta Falcons, who need many other you know, positions addressed. They went with Drake London. They needed a wide receiver. Had it been, I keep saying it's Calvin Ridley. Had it been Calvin Ridley you know, on that team right now, he'd be a top 10, top 15 receiver, okay? Bottom line. So, guys, Drake London here. Absolutely amazing. So don't sleep on rookies, guys, and just draft a Marquise Valdez-Scanling or a J.D. McKissick or someone like that when you could get these guys with upside. A perfect example is Damian Pierce, right? He was a rookie sleeper. I keep telling people about him back in May. I'm like, this guy's in a prime position to succeed. Marlon Mack sucks. I had the beat writer guys on. The beat writer was on my show. The beat writer, Aaron Wilson. I said, listen, right to his face. Marlon Mack sucks. Oh, no, you know, Marlon Mack is slated as a starter, according to all the coaches, what they're saying. Like, I don't care what the coaches are saying. Talent prevails. Marlon Mack sucks. Sure enough, Marlon Mack is now cut, and the counselor was right. Call me the RB whisperer, whatever you want. All I'm saying is this, guys. You can take some swings on some rookies this year, and there's going to be a lot of home runs, okay, this year. There's going to be a ton. There's a ton of talent, and these guys are in positions to succeed. So in the tip number one this year, you know, and I see so many people avoid it, avoiding it. I saw it in that mock draft that live mock draft i did do not sleep on rookies okay tip number two i said this in my last video and i want to hammer this point home it's like look both ways before you cross the street it's like common knowledge to people but to a lot of people it's not tip number two very simple guys go robust rb guys this is so important i cannot express to you enough how important this is because again at that live draft i'm using that as an example i use my drafts as an example i've done enough mock drafts this year to know and i know where the edps are and i know statistically and historically how this all plays out go robust rb because there is no running backs after the fourth round that you could really 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 trust okay so again let's talk about it so who is in and around that range that you can get after you've gone zero RB. Let's say you get you go wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, and maybe you go quarterback or something like that. What happens after? Let's say you go zero RB, you avoid the running back position. You are in a situation where you're looking at guys like Elijah Mitchell. I don't trust the 49ers. Don't. Josh Jacobs, maybe he could be good, right? Maybe, just maybe, right? Because they got rid of that other guy, Kenny and Drake, who sucked, right? But they did bring in Zamir White, rookie. You're looking at Chase Edmonds, who was overly inflated in touchdowns last year, in a good position, but years to wow us were not wild and has been plagued with injuries throughout the past. You're looking at the Antonio Gibsons and the Clyde Edwards Alaires, right? And the Kareem Hunts and the Tony, Tony Pollards of the world. Okay, that's what you're looking at if you fade the running backs early. And some people say, well, I'm good because I've got Chase Edmonds and James Conner as my running backs. I'm like, you know, I don't trust that. Right, And one of the main excuses for these zero RB people, the ones that say fade running back, the can sheeps, it's the sheep that say fade running back. Those people that tell you to fade running back have no clue. And their main excuse is for going with this strategy is, oh, running backs get hurt. I don't want them to spend a first round pick on a running back. That's the stupidest logic because you need more running backs. That's why you go robust RB. So you have a lot of depth at, run at running back so that you cover yourself in case a running back falls. So the definition is what is robust RB? 
is drafting three workhorse. The key here is workhorse, non-committee. Three workhorse running backs within the first four rounds, no matter what. I don't care if it's a super flex league. I secure my running backs early. That is going robust. That's going hard. That's going crazy. And all these people talk about hero RB. I don't know what hero RB. I don't. That means nothing. I'm not. I'm not six years old anymore, right? I don't care about heroes. The only hero is myself and my my confidence in myself and selecting the running backs that are in no committees, right? Don't give me this zero RB, hero RB BS because I'm not buying it, right? There's no such thing as that term. It means nothing. Anyone talking about hero RB has no idea what they're talking about and they just made up this term. Don't ever use that term. Don't believe in that term. That term is BS. So go robust RB, go RB hard, Earlier on, because that position, I was at this live mock draft, man. People were scrambling. Don't be one of those people scrambling for a running back. And you're like, oh, do I decide between Damian Harris and Stevenson or Singletary or Melvin Gordon? No, (laughs) no, you've gone top heavy running backs. You should be looking at sleepers. Okay. Okay. Number tip number three, this is very important is anticipate. Now, Damian Pierce is a perfect example of this. Some people are saying, well, Joe, where do I draft Damian Pierce? If you want him, you got to go early, and it, it's okay to reach. And some people are so afraid to reach because of what the consensus tell you, right? So some people would rather draft. I'll give you a quick example here. Some people would rather draft a Marquis. This is a perfect example. A Marquise Valdez Scanling, right? Or someone crappy like that who has had years to wow us. Or, or they'd rather draft a Tyler Boyd, who's a wide receiver three on his team, than drafting a Traylon Burks, who could be the wide receiver one on his team. Does that make sense? People will, will, will go Russell Gage or Tyler Boyd or MBS or someone like that. Years to wow us were not wide receivers when you could be drafting a guy that could be a wide receiver on his team, an Alec Pierce or a Traylon Burks or someone like that who's got that upside. Okay, so always look and aim high on those depth charts and anticipate because if you don't anticipate, your player is going to get sniped. Okay, so when I talk anticipate, again, back to Damian Pierce, and I'm telling people, man, if you need a workhorse running back, which is the most scarce position, you might have to get him. Let's say you draft first overall and it's a snake draft. You're coming back around on the 24th, 25th pick, right? And if you don't get Alec or Damian Pierce there, you're, he's not coming around on the four or five turns. So you, that's a decision you have to make and live with. So anticipate if you really want a player, you got to get him earlier than you think, and it's okay to reach. So that's another part of tip number three, anticipate. Anticipate and it's okay to reach if it's a player you believe in that you know is going to get sniped. Okay, guys, very, very important. All right, uh, tip number four here. I talk about this a lot in my other videos. There's wide receivers for days. And again, going back to that zero RB strategy, I think it's absolutely crazy. Robust is the way to go because I'm going to give you guys some advice here, okay? This is very, very practical and very, very uh, good advice here. Now, I'm I'm looking here at rounds four to seven. I'll give you a couple wide receiver ones here, okay? Real quick. Brandon Cooks, <clears throat> DK Metcalf, Darnell Mooney, Amon Ross St. Brown, Michael Thomas, potentially Jerry Judy, Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, um, Christian Kirk, Drake London. I can keep going. Okay. This is this Brandon Cooks is rate, rated 20th on the consensus rankings. I just gave you 10, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, 10, just off the top of my head. 10 wide receivers that are available after round four that are wide receiver ones. Okay. Now I'm going to go do the same thing with running backs here. This is a practical example here after the fourth round. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys that there, there's no depth at the running back position. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys, right? There, after round four, it's literally a crapshoot, okay? I'm looking at these guys right now, and I'm seeing there, it, there's no one I trust. So, again, we went. To, I looked at Cooks, and I went. I rhymed off 10, right, at wide receiver, 10 wide receiver ones. I started at 20 here. I got Cam Akers, A.J. Dillon, Elijah Mitchell, Josh Jacobs, J.K. Dobbins, Chase Edmonds, Antonio Gibson, Alaire Hunt, Pollard, and then it gets really dicey. Now, you could maybe... You know, Kenneth Walker could be the RB1. There is a couple guys, some gems in there that could really hit. But there's uncertainty. J.K. Dobbins, I don't trust. He was already limping off the field the other day. And Lamar Jackson is a RB1. I don't draft running backs that are in positions where the quarterback is putting up top 10 running back numbers. Does that make sense to you guys? Antonio Gibson, they brought in Brian Robinson, who recently got shot. Very unfortunate. Should be back with trainers. I don't know what his expected time of coming back is, but Antonio Gibson fumbles like crazy. They don't like him, right? You got Tony Pollard who's in a committee with Zeke Elliott, and Zeke Elliott is going to eat this year. You got Kareem Hunt who's disgruntled. You got all these situations, Damian Harris, Miles Sanders who sucks. All these situations where I don't really trust these RB1s. Now, there is some RB1s 
diamonds in the roughs there. Maybe a Cordell Patterson. Maybe a James Cook could take that job. Maybe a Kenneth Walker. So there is some diamonds in the rough, but there's no certainty that these guys are primed for volume, like the wide receivers that I stated, right? They're the wide receiver ones on their team. And that's it's that simple, guys. Like, you got to wait on... <laughs> I cannot explain this, guys. Got to wait on wide receiver because you can get a lot after round four. Tons, okay? But with running back, it gets really dicey. Going back to tip number two, go robust RP, okay? So tip number four, recap, wide receivers for days and days and days and days and days. Tons of depth at that position. And typically, people start two wide receivers. All you need is two wide receivers that are high on the depth chart that are going to be volume getters. And you're solid. You don't have to get your Tyreek Hill and your Devontae Adams, who I believe will bust. I believe that both of them will bust, right? They've got wide receiver ones on those teams, respectively. In comes another wide receiver. Is there enough volume to go around? I don't trust it. So be cautious with those early round wide receivers. And I think Jeff, I mean Jefferson and Chase could be solid. But I like the, the Adam Thielen value later. Love that. And Jamar Chase, I'm willing to part with him this year, unfortunately, and get a running back in round one, okay? And the last one here, very important. I've talked about in other videos, but I want to hammer this point home, and I wanted to be more practical today with my advice. Aim high in the depth chart. Traylon Burks, right? High draft capital on him. Great value, right? Damian Pierce, aiming high on my depth chart. Bam. I was going for him when Marlon Mack was there because I knew he could take that job. Sure enough, he did, right? Brees Hall, bam, they're saying Michael Carter's a starter. But is he? Is he the starter? Is he really? Because he fumbled in week three of preseason. They moved up to draft Brees Hall, round two. I don't trust what coaches says. That's another draft tip. I don't care what coaches say because they're full of BS, okay? Now, you're saying, here's another example. Aim high on the depth chart, and you're an example where you look at a guy like Aaron Jones. Are you aiming high on the depth chart? A.J. Dillon actually out-attempted him, out-rushed him, and out-touchdowned him on the ground last year. Who is the RB1? Am I aiming high on the depth chart when I'm drafting Aaron Jones round two? That's what the Kinshivas lead you to believe. They don't even tell you to aim high on the depth chart. They just say draft Aaron Jones because he had a good year a couple years ago. Like, it's crazy because A.J. Dillon was the RB1 last year. Okay, did you know that? Comment below. Did you know that A.J. Dillon was the RB1 last year? What signifies an RB1? A guy that gets more rushing attempts. A guy that gets more volume. A guy that gets more touchdowns. And A.J. Dillon had all of those. Now, Aaron Jones beat him in a couple metrics in receiving. That's fine. A.J. Dillon, it was a 50-50 split in snap count, pretty much, give or take 1% or 2%, right? So I'm not spending an early draft capital pick on Aaron Jones knowing that A.J. Dillon is getting 50% of that volume. I'm aiming high on the depth chart like a Saquon Barkley, where I don't even know. I think it's Matt Breed as the backup, but he sucks. So Saquon's going to be that workhorse, aiming high and making sure that I'm getting the alpha of every single team. That's important. So when I see people drafting a J.D. McKissick, or a Marquise Valdez-Scantling. Now, MVS could do well this year. I, I, I doubt it, right? Or I see people drafting a, let me give you another example, uh, Daryl Henderson. Why? Why would I get a bottom feeder like Daryl Henderson? I just wouldn't. Maybe Cam Akers gets hurt. Either way, I don't trust him. Why would I get a single Terry when they drafted James Cook? I don't trust him. Why would I get a Melvin Gordon when, you know, Javante is supposed to be the alpha? I wouldn't. Period. Zilch. I, I just won't do it. I will not aim low on the depth chart. I will not settle. Now, in later rounds, you're saying, you're settling, Joe. Well, am I, though? Because I'm still getting those rookies, right? Tip number one, don't sleep on rookies. I'm still getting rookies that could potentially be number one alpha on their team. Do you understand, guys? So it's very, very important that you aim high on the depth chart to wrap this up. All right, guys? Now, I know a lot of people are drafting this year, this weekend, and I'm super excited. So make sure you guys do get 16 rounds and take these tips under consideration, okay? So don't sleep on rookies. Uh, go robust RB. Anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. Don't get sniped. Wide receivers for days. I gave you a bunch. I gave you 10 on my hand. And aim high on those depth charts. Get the alpha of your your uh, of that team, okay? Very important. Now, I know you're drafting this weekend. So, again, use that code FFC20. Order some Hooters. Save $10 on order. 30 more on takeout or delivery. Hooters.com or download the app. FFC20 is the code. Go order some wings this weekend. And get that 16-round draft solution because you have a principal cheat sheet all the optimal players are drafted each round. You will crush your league. So get the 16-round draft solution, guys. I've linked it below. I appreciate you guys being here. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. We're going year-round waiver wires. We're talking NFL news, breaking news, injuries, everything here. So make sure you guys click subscribe and leave a five-star rating review if you're listening on Spotify or Apple. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. I'm out. Let's get it, guys. Domination football is back. We'll talk soon. 